Connecting. Hey, there he is. How are you, Eric? I'm good. How are you, bud? I'm good. What's going on? Oh, nothing. I'm in in the car today. I see that. I'm uh, I'm on daddy duty, so Miles is in the back eating some raisins. He's eating raisins. Eating some raisins. Yep. Enjoy the raisins, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I thought today, because we talk a lot about like the core and um kind of how we all like lean forward and text a lot and we're on the computer um i thought maybe we talk about kind of the, the back a little bit you know hey look at that <laughs> i just happen to have a back here in my office <laughs> <laughs> well lucky you right um, so i noticed that like i get um I feel like most of my back pain is not so much related to running as much as it is related to uh, technology and work and sitting and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you know, running can cause back pain for um, certain people, whether it's just from the impact of loading or when the foot hits the ground, depending how well that person um, dis dissipates the force of running, um, possibly with overuse of the hip musculature, but more likely the back pain is from something else we're doing besides the running, like okay. sitting at a computer all day, head down staring at our phone all day, um, many other things which we can definitely absolutely talk about. Um, yeah. So yeah. you, you kind of leave the questions and even if it's personal about you, I'm sure someone's going to learn from it, right? Yeah, totally. So I notice I get uh, a good amount of pain, um, upper back, kind of the muscles that like run down the spine. Um, yeah. Now I am pretty sure that's just from like doing this move all day and looking at my phone. Um, what are those muscles like called? What do they do? And okay. uh, how? How can I, other than stop texting and looking at my phone, how can I like help get rid of some of that pain? All right, let's let's go over to the skeleton a little bit. All right. You can see it. Do you see it okay from there? Yeah, yeah. All right. So there's the back of your your skull, right? Mm -hmm. Right here. If you can visualize like the most superficial muscle, your your upper trap, starts up here in the upper neck. Uh, right below your skull, comes out to the side of the shoulders, and then comes down to the, you know, almost to the lumbar spine. So it's a big okay. diamond shaped, trapezius shaped muscle, is why we call it the, the trapezius. Um, deeper to that, you've got muscles that run along the spine. They overlap. You might have one that goes here, then there. So it's a layer from, we, call, we just group them together. We call them paraspinal muscles. So the muscles on either side of your spine, okay? Mm -hmm. Then deeper to that, um, you have muscles that attach to these tiny little uh, bones on the vertebra. So they go one segment to one segment, and then another head of it goes every two segments. So they're like the size of half of your finger. Um, okay. That's like the deepest layer, all right? So yeah. if we go back to that first trapezius layer, you also have, you know, um, you have your upper trap, you have rhomboids, you have other back muscles through here, but for the most part, the upper trap tends to be more of an issue. It's something like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I can't move this spine too much, but as you're trying <laughs> crank this head forward, as you're leaning forward, looking down at your phone like this, all these muscles on the back side of your neck and upper back are contracting to hold your head onto your body so it doesn't fall right off your body. Right? Yeah. And you spend a lot of time on your phone because you've got a lot, you know, a lot of what you do is um, on Instagram and communicating with people through that. So yeah. that, that's un unfortunately a part of uh, what you're doing every day, what a lot of people are doing. So it's constantly these muscles are contracting and tightening to keep your head on, right? So that's why you can get an overwork and pain and kind of just aggravation on the backside through here. Okay? okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So there's like muscles that are running along the spine, the traps, they're all like working to keep my head from falling off. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So I hold it up. And I heard in 
was it Jerry Maguire that the that the human head weighs like twelve pounds or ten pounds or something? Yeah, yeah. Jerry Maguire's future stepson. Um, yeah. in that movie did say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you think about it. That's a, just a lot of weight that your cranium. You know, especially you. You got a big brain. I know that. Right. So that big brain is weighing you down this way. So it's a lot of extra work. But what compounds all that extra stress back here is what happens in the front of the body. This guy lost his face, by the way. It's a little disturbing to look at. I apologize. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. But as you're here in this type of position or on a laptop like this, mm -hmm. the, the shoulders kind of roll in this way. And I can't move this class, but everything comes down and forward this way as we're functioning close to our center up yeah. here. So sense. now you've got your big pec muscles in through here. You've got anterior muscles in your neck. They're all getting shortened in this in this position, which is causing even more workload back here. So now it's like the position of your head, and then you get this pulling effect here. It's like if I were to reach through the phone and grab your American flag um, face covering there and yank you forward, right? Can you imagine that? Like, t just take it and pull it forward for me. No, t I should grab it. Yeah, yeah. So okay. where on your neck do you feel the pressure of the of the um of the flag right on the back, back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah. where's the where's the problem where's the pulling coming from it's coming from the front mike it is it is eric it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> all that in here is great like, if people come in and we're you know we've got to do some work back in here but if we don't address what's going on in the front um there's going to be only so much benefit we can get out of it make sense Right. Is that where you got to kind of like open it up as opposed to like, yeah. am I going to want to strengthen these muscles or am I going to want to like kind of release them? You know, the correct answer is both. But if you want to just look at the, what we're talking about, you would want to strengthen back through here so it's stronger to help support this position. Um, there might need some lengthening and stretching as well, but for the most part, it's kind of strengthening what's weaker here and opening up and stretching what's tighter here. Does that make sense? All right. Yeah, it and does. There's a, similar, there's a similar thing that happens um, at the lower back as well. So yeah. you can have, you know, you know, let's picture, okay, while you're on your phone or on your laptop, most of the time you're going to be sitting. Not all the time, but most of the time, right? So as you sit, you see my legs here? Hold on. Let me lower. Look, guys in the seated position here. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. So the hip flexors in the front through here are going to get shortened. Okay? Because right. this is the neutral position. If you can picture where my hand is as the hip flexor muscle, as your leg comes up, this muscle shortens. Okay? The muscles back here get on overstretch. Neither one of those is a good scenario. The hip flexor in the front that gets shortened, similar to the pec in the front here that we just talked about, they attach along the side of your lumbar spine and through here. So if you stand up and run and try to function, they're pushing your spine forward because of the tension that's created from prolonged sitting in the front. That make sense? Ah, uh, well, all right. Yeah, 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 totally. So, just, uh, I have kind of a selfish question. There's this, like, Check. thing in my trap that feels like it's a bone that used to not be there. Is that like a... <laughs> you growing bones? I don't know what's going on up there. Or is it just like a really tight yeah. spot? So it could be. I think that's the area we needled on you when we did the needle demonstration, right? It's just like really hard. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of times it is a probably a chronic trigger point in there, which I know we've used that term many times, the area of the muscle that's just in a contraction and it could feel almost as hard as bone sometimes. But other times it is yeah. bone. You know, you could have um, an elevated first rib. Let's see this guy right here. That's the, the, the yeah, top yeah. rib. Sometimes with all this extra tension, that bone, which is about the size of my finger, can get pulled up and displaced slightly. Huh. So as you're po poking at your trap, you could be touching that bone. So what feels like bone could actually be your bone. Interesting. 
So because yeah. of this, this like so much of this, does it is it like pulling the trap off of that, or is it just no, like... not necessarily pulling it off of it? But all right, so two things. One, yeah. don't take this personal. You're not the most muscular person on earth. We know that, right? <laughs> That is a good point. Yes. Right. So you're pretty lean. So we can we can poke through your upper trap and maybe push hard enough and get to that, right? So some people yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. there's not a ton of muscle there. Sometimes it can get a little bit elevated, which causes pain. But another scenario is there's a disorder called um, a cervical rib or an extra rib. So some people have an extra short little rib up here, huh. and that doesn't function to do anything except cause problems and pain. So. Gotcha. Just by touching it, it might be hard to tell, but as we assess, we do different things to figure out, you know, is it, a, is it your first rib? Is it a cervical rib? Is it just a trigger point in your trapezius? Because it could be all three. Okay, gotcha. Okay, I'm gonna have to come in and have you inspect that thing. Let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. I think I need a, I need to look at. Um, so I have a question. Are there some things I can do Maybe, because I know, like, I'm going to have to use my phone. I'm going to have to be at the computer. Yeah. What are some, like, ways maybe while I'm doing that stuff? Like, should I, can I hold my phone up here and that's better? Should I stand at a desk? What do you think? Any tips? Yes. Yes to all of it. So okay. the, the first thing I would say, like, I could, I could tell you, okay, stretch this and stretch that, right? So let's just say I show you a, a, a pec stretch and a hip flexor stretch to try to help. And you're going to, you know, let's say you're doing those stretches once a day for a total of like three minutes per muscle. So three minutes out of that day, you're doing something positive for the muscle. 15 hours out of that day, you're shortening the muscle. So is that right. three minutes going to, you know, counteract the 15 hours? Maybe. I mean, it's better than not doing it. But right. what's more important is changing position all the time. So okay. I try to get anyone who sits at a desk or in one position to set a timer and every 20 to 30 minutes change position. Okay. Some people have the some people have the ability to like, you know, we're all we all work on laptops mostly, which is awful. If you're if you're a computer worker and you're spending a lot of time, you need to get an extra screen so you're not, you know, staring down at a screen <clears throat> a screen that's a half inch above your keyboard. That's ergonomically not ideal, but they're convenient, right? That's why we all use them. But change positions. Set a timer every 20 to 30 minutes. If you can't actually change positions, let's just say I'm hammering away, sitting at my desk, timer goes off, just get up, reach for the ceiling, just gotta move around a little bit, okay, and then go back to work. Now you can say that you haven't been in that one position for more than 20 minutes. So that's actually a good thing. Still, overall, you're still there more hours than we should be, but at least you're breaking it up, okay? So that's a minimal. Just stand up, reach for the ceiling, get your arms behind you, just do something to get out of that position, then go right back to work. It won't affect productivity, your mojo, everything should still be good. Even right. better is going for a walk, doing a couple stretches, and changing position. So a lot of us right. are working from home these days, right? So I'm telling people, get off the desk, yep. lie on your stomach on the floor on your laptop. So you're getting this like extended position, you're up on your elbows, looking at the screen. You can't spend all day doing that, but now you're in a different position. Buzzer goes off 20, 30 minutes later, um, then go to a standing area. Get your laptop set up on the kitchen counter on some books or something, so now you're standing. So now you alternate between three different positions, so you're not getting the negative effects of being in one position too long. Interesting. And I bet, I have no scientific data to back me up, but I bet you'd probably be more productive if you did something like that. I agree with you, and I don't have any data either. You know, like, just that, taking a break. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, like I listened to a podcast on, uh, like, cramming for tests and things. Not a good idea. You don't want to sit yeah. and do the same thing for hours upon hours. No. Split it up. So Split it up. I think, Take a break. I think there's something to this. There is. Let's start some research. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs> so I think... I'm going to have to wrap it up right there. I think we end on some nice, solid tips. And uh, I get back to uh, going to the playground and playing. All right. Miles was awesome. He deserves, yeah, he deserves he, a he playground set. Just drinking water, eating raisins back there. I love it. Love it. Well, I hope that helps you and anyone who is listening. Uh, change positions. Keep it simple.
got it. Cool. And I'm coming in to get this weird bone thing looked at. Yeah, absolutely. Call me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right we'll see, see you. you. Thanks. All right. Bye, everybody.